today we've got a customer's repair it's a retail repair we don't normally do retail repairs uh, something he's bought on eBay and he needs it just checking out because he can't um, be heard I think he said on it so we're going to start with the VCO as we do on the Harrier CBX it uses a Sabnet BTBM 134 chassis the first thing we need to do is to locate resistor 4 and resistor 4 is just there in fact if we use the yellow tool I'll probably show up better. The resistor there, it's resistor 4, just on the edge of the wax bit, and it's the far connection, in other words, furthest away from me, not the one nearest the control panel. So, resistor 4, furthest connection, it's a floating chassis, so you, your test uh, meter needs to have the negative connected to the power supply negative rail. Now the service manual, which I have in front of me here, there we go, VCO adjustment, set the radio to receive mode, which of course we're in, select the channel to channel 40, so we'll do that, there we go, channel 40, connect the test meter between test point 1 and ground, test point 1 is there, And adjust transformer one, which is the VCO one there, to read four volts. Well, it reads 4.08, as you can see. Let's see whether we can just improve that. I'm using a metallic tool, and I shouldn't be. a bit because it's the only one that fits properly there, oh look at that <laughs> hey four volts so we've done that so set the radio into transmit mode now where's the mic gone? there it is And then we'll be adjusting CT1, and CT1 is the trimmer, the red trimmer just there. Auto power off on the meter, how annoying. Um, four, four volts again. So here we go, press transmit, 3.82. It's one of these things where you've got to shuffle things around. I'll just put the mic between my legs and work it with my knees. See whether we can get the four volts. That's a bit high. I mean, I'm being a bit silly, even being uh, as fussy as this. The whole thing, it needs to be in lock. And in lock, it certainly was. Four point oh eight snooze we're gonna get let go of transmit and we'll see where it is still four volts in in receive so that's fine. So next we need to select the channel to channel one. So we're in channel one. And we need to make sure that it, we're getting between one between my prods come off. Between 1.8 and 2.5. And look, we've got 2.05, so that's well within that 1.8 to 2.5 range. And in transmit, it needs to be in again between 1.8 and 2.5, which it is. Back to receive. There we go. So we have now set the VCO. So I'll put the meter away.
so as you saw there, it's the test point is I'll get that yellow tool back wherever it's gone. Far side of I'll just zoom in a bit, just see whether we can make that a bit clearer. So far side of resistor four. And then you've got T1 and then you've got C T1. So that's the VCO settings as I showed you just there. I'll just put the paper there. For those of you who can take a snapshot of that, that's the instructions. Right, so we're now we'll move on to the transmitter itself. And the first point of call on the transmitter, get my little crib sheet here. The RF driver. So we're going to select channel 20 for the alignments. We're in the centre of the band. Channel 20 in the UK is 27.79125. I'm going to go into transmit. And we have 27.79113, so it's slightly low. What we'll just do is we'll just bring that up with the trimmer capacitor CT2. CT2 is just there. The crystal is just there on its side, the 10.24 reference crystal. So we'll just pull that up a bit because they drop with age. Considering these are 1981, yep, it's gone up 2779125. So we're spot on on that, which is great. Now then. You know, you get all these tiny little adjustments and it might be a tiny bit out here and a tiny bit out there, but it does all add up, so it's well worth doing a proper alignment as per manual. So we need to do Transformer 2, Transformer 3 and then Transformer 4. So Transformer 2 is there. So I've got my RF power meter and... That is peaked. Transformer three. Is peaked. Transformer four is the one at the back. So we've got two, three, and four. You know, this radio is absolutely immaculate. Moving over to the PA, we should have L4, 8, and 9. Just make a note on my little chart there. Hopefully, we can get 4.4 watts out of it. At the moment, it's doing 3.1. So, peak that one. Yeah, that's gone straight up, straight up to 4 4.5, 4.5, 4.6. So, we're just going to check those again for maximum. It's just a shade away from 5. So, what, what the manual now says is to rotate core number four to obtain 4.4 watts, which is what we've done. Well, we'll just do that so it is. Which it is now. It's clockwise for four. I didn't do that. Clockwise for four point four. L nine counterclockwise for three point eight. There's L nine. So counterclockwise for three point eight, which we've done. And then setting the power for
I'll tell you what, we'll, 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 we won't do that. We'll set it. We'll let it go up for. They want. They want you to have this for absolute. Um, not quite doing four watts. Well, we want it to do four watts. So four watts, it's now doing. But that's the important thing. The power's adjusted by. Um, effectively, you're trimming L4 clockwise to obtain the power that you're looking for, which should be 4 watts. So that's now all set. I'm just going to pause the video and just check it's the same kind of power on all channels. Okay, so now we've brought this radio up from 3.2 watts to the full 4 watts, so that'll help. Um, the radio being UK 2781 format has got a high low power switch to switch it to 0.4 of a watt. So we'll now select 0.4 of a watt. And there's no transmit at all. Now the preset for that is, um, I think it's that one there, RV5. It is RV5. We'll just get the switch cleaner because we use the service all while. I've just dropped the trimming tool. And experience has told me that they can get a little bit um, dirty. So I'm just going to um, just work that in. And now we'll try transmitting again. Fine. And that's now doing 0.4 watts as it should be in the low power setting. Flick it back to high power and we've got the full 4 watts. Excellent. So that's covered that. So a little bit of a fault there. So we've set the radio on frequency. The next thing we need to do is to set the deviation. And it's RV6 for maximum deviation, which is going to be 2.5. And, and then it's supposed to be backed off with RV2. So RV6 is the one which is vertical just there. And RV2 is the one which is horizontal there. So let's see what the deviation is. I'll just get the little um, oscillator out which we use. It's just gone between the AVO meter and the power supply. So we've got Look at the deep. We've only got 1.4 deviation. So what we'll just do is we'll bring that up to 2.5. I'll do that off camera because it's quite a swine to get into. Okay, so we've set that up to uh, just under 2.5 deviation, uh, trimming it with the RV2. <whistles> Quick whistle test, wallo, and that's. Fantastic. I've got a monitor receiver hopefully behind me. Just switch that on. Testing one two one two three four five five four three two one. That's nice. One two three. Good. So we really need to set the meter to read uh, four watts on the relative power meter on the front panel. Uh, I seem to recall that's RV four. It is indeed. RV4 is the one just there. So I'm going to key up. Let's see what it says on the front panel. It says between 4 and 5. So it's just a bit over the top. Now this is always relative to SWR. So you know you take this reading with a pinch of salt. We're into a dummy load on the test set. That is now reading 4. I'll just try and get it square onto the camera. You see that? That's reading 4. It was reading 5 before. It means absolutely nothing. It's just an indication that it is in fact transmitting. And that covers the transmitter side of the Harrier CBX. So I'll join you on the receive side of the video.